Hans Wormhat. This is a video on why I hate crosses, and I'll try to keep my video really focused because it's really easy to go off into these tangents about phony Christians, just because almost anything, that if you just grab a somebody who claims to be Christian at random and, you know, kind of observe their actions, so much stuff is phony and so much stuff that these everyday Christians do goes directly against what Jesus Christ himself told us. And yeah, one of those things, wearing a cross. If you just grab a Christian at random, at least in my opinion, it seems like you're, you're probably going to grab somebody who wears a cross. They go to church every Sunday. Uh, you know, a masonry, 501c3 church. And of course, I don't support any of that stuff. And Jesus didn't support any of that stuff. Jesus talked a lot about people who had the nicest seats in the synagogue and they were well respected. Think of the pastor at a, a local church. Just what I think is kind of a chubby free Martin with really nice looking hair. Like, like they've had their hair cut in the past week. They always look like that, no matter what. And yeah, probably wearing a, a cross, driving a nice car. And yeah, that goes against what Jesus told us. Where, where are the pastors out there that really embrace things that Jesus taught and reject things of, of the world? And you're not going to find it because this is Satan's earth. You know, there, there might be a few scattered, but if you go to just a mainstream Christian church, you're going to be surrounded by phonies. And it's just the way it is. Jesus told us straight and narrow path and few there be who find it. And there's a broad way to destruction. All we can do is just try to tell people what we think is the truth to the best of our ability and hope and pray that they figure it out too, that they realize that what they're doing is wrong, that it's phony. It's phony to think that being a Christian is all about wearing a piece of jewelry and going to church every Sunday. And it's a message that doesn't get said enough. Anyway, so I'm going to read this, try to keep this a focus video. So guys, I just had a dream that turned into a complete nightmare and I kind of saw a demon in it. I was actually lucid in the dream as well, but I was scared to the point where I didn't want to move or even look at it. They actually couldn't. In, in these dreams, you're paralyzed. It actually started as a normal dream, and I was just chilling and hanging out with my family. Then I was suddenly alone and looking at my computer in the dream, and everything went offline. The room suddenly flashed white, and some thing came into the room and was walking on all fours. I was shaking in the dream and was trying hard not to look at it and be completely silent. Then, as it was about to get me, I woke up. As I woke up, I heard its frustration and anger as a hissing and growling noise. Guess what I woke up to? YouTube on my phone playing gay, satanic stuff. I don't even use YouTube on my phone. Get rid of your phones and don't sleep next to them at all. Keep them far away. I don't know what's going on with YouTube, but it's affecting my dreams now. I just thought this was a great uh, little story. And I, I have bad dreams pretty frequently when I do dream. I don't dream very often, but when I do dream, it's usually really frustrating dreams. People are like chasing me out to get me. Everybody's mad at me for no reason. That's my typical dream. I have had some yeah, sleep paralysis dreams, but whenever I dream, I mean, kind of like this person says, I'm, I'm usually in this like half lucid state when I dream. I, I can't control my actions and part of me is going along with the dream, but part of me usually knows, oh, okay, this is a dream. But anyways, I, I can just say, if you ever have a bad dream like this, and it takes practice, because I've had dr bad dreams, you know, for a while, and I've been following Jesus for a while, but I've only just now gotten to the point where when I'm having a bad dream, I start to pray, and once you once you get to talking about Jesus Christ, the dream ends. And so if you're ever stuck in a in a bad dream, call out to Jesus, and your dream will end. I've never heard people talking about this, about calling out to Odin and their dream ends, calling out to Muhammad and their dream ends. Never heard that. But I hear all the time about people calling out to Jesus. Okay, so I just thought this was an interesting thing. And the whole YouTube phone thing. Yeah, I I get the same feeling about I don't like having my phone near me when I'm sleeping. Uh, I don't do it all the time. I'm not the best about this because I, I really like to check messages and check for comments and stuff, but a lot of times I do like to 
keep my phone far away from me while I sleep, turn it off. But even if you turn it off these days, can't can't do much. But the cell phone, it is it's a black mirror and that everybody has keeps it around themselves, you know. Maybe think twice about stuff like this sleeping next to it. <laughs> but the how is this connected to the cross thing? Look at people in the comments. I didn't see people saying to call out to Jesus Christ to end these dreams. Look at what these people are saying. Yes, the letting them into your body thing is true. The demon in my dream looked like it had a bee stinger. Maybe it didn't, but in my dream it looked like it. That's really interesting because the book of Revelation talks about creatures with stingers. I straight up rejected it and I scream into my head to wake up. Now I'm putting crosses on my door tonight. What do they think? That doing this, putting a cross on your, that's not going to do anything. You need to follow Jesus. Jesus is going to deliver you from the demons. Drawing a symbol on your door is not going to deliver you from demons. Wearing a trinket on your neck is not going to deliver you from, from demons. But calling out for Jesus Christ, that will deliver you from demons. And then look at this. Get one of these little trinket. The earth is full of these people that their faith level is just non-existent. They're as bad as a pagan. They think that scrawling a, a rune on their door is going to save them. They think that buying a trinket that somebody made with their hands is going to save them. And yeah, to me, it's just how weak is your faith that you think that doing these things matters at all. And I don't know, because I've always been, I'm not like the superstitious type. Isn't that what wearing a cross is? It's a superstition. It's a voodoo magic. You you think that by wearing some sort of object, you're giving yourself power. Exodus chapter 20, verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. It's talking about this kind of stuff. Do not do this. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 8, their land also is full of idols, like American Idol. All those idols, all the idols on the TV, all the idols on the radio. You live in Babylon, people worship these idols. They really do. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 19, they shall cast their silver in the streets and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. When Jesus comes back in the clouds, there's going to be a lot of people that are totally blindsided because they're left on the ground. <clears throat> and yeah, maybe they're going to be grabbing their gold cross necklace and, why Jesus, why? Well, because you're a big phony. That's why. Spit you out. And I pray that that's the wake-up call for them and they turn their life around and they have one more chance to reject the mark of the beast and have their head chopped off and i don't even think that's that bad you know i'll if that day came around and they're like take the mark or get your head chopped off i'm i'm ready for that that doesn't even sound that bad to me so uh i don't know i'm i pray that I'm going away in the rapture i do believe in the rapture i do believe that people are going to get taken away from this place before tribulation However, a lot of, most, you know, most people are going to be stuck on the ground. And there's going to be a lot of people that think that they're going to be saved, but they're just, they're not. Fetishism. If you think that wearing a cross has anything to do with Christianity, you're no better than this. A fetish. I, I thought this was really interesting. Uh, this is in turn from Lat Latin. Fact. Tixius, artificial. How interesting that the Latin word for artificial has the word fact in it. Very interesting. Um, is it, so uh, a fetish is an object believed to have supernatural powers, or in particular, a human-made object that has power over others. Essentially, fetishism is the emic attribution of inherent value or powers to an object. God does not like this. Like, really, when when you think of a modern-day Christian wearing a cross, it's no better than this type of thing. Than voodoo. It's voodoo. Genesis chapter 4, verse 22. I just thought this was... A, we'll just end with these. Artificer. And Zyla, she, <clears throat> and Zyla, she also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. 
First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 5. The gold for things of gold, and the silver for things of silver, and for all manners of work to be made by the hands of artificers. And who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord? So yeah, uh, people working with gold and silver, artificers. The ark, wasn't the ark of the... Uh, the ark that was in the temple, wasn't that made of gold? And people think that maybe electrical stuff going on. That's what I want to end this video with, just a kind of an interesting thing. Gold is a really good conductor. Electronics often have gold stuff in it. The people are now putting the pieces together that these old church buildings, it seems like they have electrical components going through them. A lot of these churches, they have like metal rods going through the whole church, and then they have the all the gold uh, statues up on the top. There's some strange stuff going on that we don't fully understand. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 3. The captain of 50 and the honorable man and the counselor and the cunning artificer. I just thought the adjective cunning in front of artificer was very interesting. And the eloquent orator. Okay, so yeah, that's it for this video. Um, hope you enjoyed. Leave a comment. God bless everyone.